I avoid doing barbell exercises as much as possible. Reason being, I think barbells are the most overrated and overused implement out there. How freaking dare you! You are lying, you know you are! A lot of people claim they're an absolute must in people's training and that you're missing out on so much if you don't do them. I respectfully disagree. I feel like I'm missing something. There we go. So a bunch of people sent me this video from Eugene Teo. I actually really like his stuff, but this video was titled, Why I Stopped Doing Barbell Exercises and You Should Too, which is obviously a pretty big title, Mr. Teo. He is the one. They are extremely convenient, and it's not to say that they're ineffective or that there aren't some very obvious exceptions, which I'll get to as well. But in general, if I can switch out a barbell exercise with another exercise, I will. So this was actually nice to see that there is some context, there is some nuance, it does depend on the individual, uh, their preferences, their morphology, etc. So the title is pretty aggressively worded, but so far, so good. I don't expect to be agreed with all the time, but I'd love to be able to get some open discussions going on this topic. So this is also nice to see, and I've noticed some people in the fitness industry, or just those who lift weights, they become more dogmatic over time. So eventually they're just an old man yelling at a trap bar or cloud or whatever. I'm not gonna name names. Can't you just use this recent photo? Do that again, drag your ass up. Yeah. All right. Do that again, drag your Here ass you go. up. Woohoo! Who's laughing now? <laughs> it, shut up. Uh, whereas other people become more open-minded. They, you know, experiment with their training, they try new protocols and systems, and they keep learning. And I think it is important to be the second type of person rather than the first type. So the biggest reason why I don't do barbell exercises is they force your body into one strict plane of movement that isn't ideal for everybody. So I actually kind of disagree with this. He goes on to say that in a barbell bench press, you are locked onto the bar and therefore you cannot have full freedom of movement like you would with dumbbells. And I agree. And if you want to do only one for hypertrophy and you have no interest in powerlifting or doing a specific movement like the barbell bench press, you don't have to include it in your training. Point blank. However, it's also true that most machines are even more restrictive than barbells. So if you're doing a leg press, you don't really have full freedom of movement. Your legs are fixed on that pad, Sometimes the seat adjusts, often it doesn't. If you're doing a chest press, you can maybe adjust the height of the seat, but it's not gonna have as much freedom of movement in a lot of cases as a barbell. They are called free weights for a reason. And cables and dumbbells are more free than barbells, but barbells are still typically more free than machines. Now, joint strain isn't a bad thing. The human body is not fragile, it's incredibly resilient and has the ability to recover and come back stronger from the stress we expose it to. What's up guys? At that point, where the level of joint stress starts to overtake your recovery threshold, that's where you may start to experience all sorts of issues such as extra tightness and restrictions and potentially pain and injury. However, he does make the good point that the barbell exercises do have drawbacks. And even if you're a power lifter, typically you're gonna be doing accessory work. And this is partly to build up your weaknesses, but also to avoid injury and to spread the stress on the body. If you're only doing the same movement and you're doing you know, 20 sets per week of it, hard, near failure, etc., that is a lot of stress that accumulates in a specific area. It could be the wrists, could be the elbows, could be the shoulders, could be the knees, the hips, lower back, lots of areas could get messed up, maybe. Um, but if you just want hypertrophy, you don't need to use barbells. And in fact, that can either be a small to moderate part of your training, or you can just skip them entirely. Everybody is different. So it's not a blanket rule that doing barbells are gonna give you these issues. But from my experiences and conversations with much more experienced lifters and coaches, it's something they all tend to agree on. If you can switch out a barbell exercise for something else that will give you the same, if not more benefits, whilst preserving your joints, it's probably a good idea to do that. And this is where I think having a variety of tools in your toolbox is very, very useful. You don't have to go conjugate where every you know, week is a different exercise. Although that is viable, especially if you're not a power lifter. And instead of just doing barbell bench press, you can do barbell bench press, but also flat dumbbell bench press, 
You can do incline presses, you can do decline presses, you can do dips, you can use machines, you can do power flies, you can do full flies, you can do the pec deck machine. There are lots of options to build up an area. And you will probably find that having a little bit more variation is going to keep you healthy, especially when you are more advanced, you have a little bit more mileage on your body and you just need more volume to grow. Anyway, if you don't know what variations are going to be good for you, I wrote a book that has hundreds of exercises, all fully described pictures, everything. Um, link in a pinned comment below. For upper body exercises, there is absolutely no reason why you can't switch out all of your barbell exercises for dumbbells, cables, machine, or bodyweight exercises. People often demonize this and say you're going to miss out on the big, heavy compound movements that are so essential for getting bigger and stronger. But that's simply not the case. You're still doing compound movements and you're still able to use very heavy loads. While the total weight on the bar may be different, the actual stress you're putting on your muscles will be about the same. So you should still be aiming to progressively overload, but which exercises you are targeting can be individual. If you don't like barbell bench pressing or barbell squatting or barbell deadlifting, you don't have to do those movements. There are lots of options which could be just as good, if not better, especially if you've encountered issues with those lifts in the past. You still have to get strong, stronger than you are now, but it doesn't have to be powerlifting strong. So I've referenced this poll on Jeff Nibbert's page before, and I will no doubt do so again, because I think it is very representative of the average level of strength of someone watching a YouTube fitness video. And it's not that impressive. It's not that high. And I would say most people don't really need to hear, hey, dude, don't do barbell movements, do these more isolation movements, or do these movements that are not the classic lifts, maybe they're modified in some way. For most people, the barbell lifts are very, very, very good and exactly what they need to be doing. What about lower body? We don't have the same problem of your feet being fixed to the bar the same way that your hands are fixed to a bar. Yeah. So there's less of an issue around the ankle, knee or hip joint that we might see through the wrists, elbows and shoulders from the hands being fixed on a straight bar. And that's why I still do incorporate a lot more straight bar work for my lower body training particularly on hinge variations like deadlifts, Romanian deadlifts, and hip thrusts. So Chris Barakat was on the Brains and Gains podcast, and he said that during his prep, he didn't do any barbell bench press, any barbell rows, any barbell overhead presses. It was all machines, with the exception of, I think, Romanian deadlifts. You know, selecting basically all machines, Okay, I was going to ask um, the, about that, yeah. The only time I had a barbell in my hand was when I was doing a conventional deadlift or an RDL. Um, every single other movement was a machine. So I did wow. no dumbbell pressing. I did no barbell pressing. You don't have to do barbells. You don't have to do, you know, the traditional movements if you want to get big muscles. They are not necessary. They are an option, but a requirement, not so much. But for lower body, I think barbells are much more viable just because the loading is going to be heavier and you do have a little bit more freedom of movement because you are not locked on to a bar. The bar is on your back or it's in your hands. But, you know, if you're locked into an RDL, that's actually good because it's more stable and you can just focus on the hips doing their thing. Plus, dumbbell movements are not quite as viable for the lower body. Yes, you can do lunges, you can do Bulgarian split squats. Dumbbell RDLs are a thing, but eventually you are likely going to outgrow those unless you just happen to go to a gym that has extremely heavy dumbbells. Same thing with goblet squats. Past around 100 pounds, it's just difficult to get into position, and you're better off doing barbell back squat or front squats. For lower body barbell exercises, I'm extremely mindful of a person's proportions and mobility. I personally have really good proportions and structures that allow me to squat effectively with a barbell whilst maintaining an upright torso and a straight back. So I am not built for squats. I have relatively long femurs. I have labrum issues uh, if I take a wider stance. So I have to put the knees way forward and stay upright if I want to build my quad. So the issue is not the barbell back squat. The issue is how you are doing it. If you're taking a wide stance, you're sitting way back, you're basically doing it more like a hinge, almost like a good morning, 
that's not going to be a great quad exercise. But if you're more upright, you're controlling the weight, you're letting the knees go forward, and then you're keeping the knees forward as you stand up, it's a totally different exercise. They're both the barbell back squat, but in terms of the results, night and day. And usually when I see someone and they're like, yeah, barbell squats didn't do anything for my quads. It's just because they're doing them in a way that doesn't really make the quads the limiting factor. Unilateral exercises, dumbbell exercises, machine exercises, and especially bars like the trap bar, as they allow you to generate much more force through your body and direct it towards your goals. And they're all a lot more customizable to each person's unique structure. So I think having more exercise variations, more variety is usually a good thing, unless you want to really build up a specific lift. There was one study, I'll try to find it. If not, just trust me, bro, where they combined one set of five exercises versus five sets of one exercise. And the group that did five different exercises actually saw better growth. Just the different exercises stimulated the muscles slightly differently and they saw more sweet ass gains. It doesn't matter if that stress is in the form of a barbell, dumbbell, cable, machine, or body weight, your body will receive it as stress. That stress can be targeted to where you want it to give you the best result possible, or it can be targeted less appropriately to the one spot and give you a whole bunch of other stuff as well. well I've always found it interesting listening to guys who have been training for a shorter or longer period of time. You know, guys who have been lifting for under five years, guys in the five to 10 range where I am, the 10 to 20 range and the 20 plus range, the old man in the gym, like the old, the old jacked grandfather. Usually over time, what seems to happen is that they are a little bit smarter with their training, a little bit more conservative, maybe a little bit more variation, perhaps avoiding failure on some lifts, perhaps moderating and managing their volume, putting a premium on recovery, maybe more days off consistency but not killing yourself or having epic workouts and you can learn from that young buck who is still building their physique me basically but you can also learn from the people who have been lifting for a very long time and i try to listen and learn from the guys who have been lifting a long time i don't take everything they say at face value and and i realize that it's n equals one and you have to find your own way but when a lot of the guys who are older say similar things, I think that's worth listening to. There are, of course, some exceptions to avoiding barbell exercises. First of all is the most obvious, convenience and preference. Barbell training can also be a lot of fun. Other obvious exception is powerlifters or any specific barbell athlete who has to use a barbell as part of this sport. And then finally, he talks about the potential pros of barbell training, uh, namely convenience. It's nice having one implement that you can stress or build the entire body with uh, enjoyment. If you like barbell training, there's absolutely nothing wrong with including it for specifically that reason. And then also he goes into powerlifting. And I would say it's even more than powerlifting. It's nice having these strict standard movements that you can use to actually gauge your strength. A lot of machines, you can't compare them to other machines. Sometimes you can't even compare them to the same machine. Okay, if if a machine, you know, wears down over time and it gets, you know, a little bit, there's like friction on the cables or something, that's no longer the exact same amount of resistance. Bro, how much you leg press? Said no one ever. That's a big reason why I created the Bible only program. So what do you think? Are you serious? I just, I just told you that a moment ago. If you started out thinking that barbells are a must in everybody's training, are you reconsidering things? Maybe you're even more staunchly for this argument and against it that I say Bible's overrated. I'm fine either way. Drop me a comment below and let me know and let's have an open discussion about it. And if you have any other questions or comments, please drop them below and I'll see you all next time. And there's a pretty wide gap between you have to do something and you can do something. You don't have to do any movement, but you can work in pretty much any lift if you want. Anyway, go check out his channel. There's a lot of, of nuance and free thinking going on over there. For example, he has a barbell only program. And when I see someone who's like, barbells are overrated, but then they also have a barbell only program, I don't think this person is a hypocrite. I think, hmm, maybe they realize that there's not one size fits all.
That's a big reason why I created a Bible only program. Also definitely grab a copy of my book. I think it will help you a lot in your fitness journey. Like, subscribe, share, do all the YouTube things, just start mashing buttons, blah, 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 and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.